Hey everybody, welcome to our species spotlight on the collector urchin, Trypneustes gratilla. This interesting little urchin is found uh, basically off the coasts of Australia. Uh, it's very prevalent in the Great Barrier Reef, and it's also found in the northern and western parts of the Indian Ocean. Uh, the typical habitat that this uh, urchin is found within are basically reef structures such as the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, both in exposed and sheltered reefs. Um, the typical type of habitat that they're found within it varies greatly. Uh, it varies anywhere from uh, meadows of seagrass to bare exposed rock to different types of reef structures and so forth. It's widely distributed throughout those areas. Uh, the typical depth that it's found at is between 2 and 30 meters in depth. Now let's talk a little bit about the behavior, tank size, uh, colors, and so forth uh, concerning the collector sea urchin. Uh, the collector sea urchin is really one of the most attractive sea urchins. It comes in a huge variety of different color morphs. In fact, many more colors versus the over 700 different species of uh, urchins that exist. There are a lot of different common names for this urchin. There's a uh, Halloween urchin, there's the Hawaiian sea urchin, pincushion, hairy pincushion. There are numerous names for the collector sea urchin and a lot of them relate to the fact that when this urchin moves about it tends to collect small bits of coral rubble or debris on its on its actual spines. Now talking about the spines, uh, it, is, it is in fact a venomous urchin but it's very mild. It's not going to really affect most people. Uh, the more protective aspect of the urchin or what it utilizes if it's under attack uh, come from the small pincers that exist in the bands between uh, the main rows of spines which look to be off in a kind of a purplish color. You'll see like these waving little, little pincers in between that. Those uh, actually are biting heads and and do help them fend off small animals that, you know, small inverts and, think, and so forth that might think of settling in the urchin as a habitat. Um, most of the uh, adult collector urchins get to be anywhere from about four to six inches or 10 to 15 centimeters in terms of diameter of the actual outer body shell. And the type of structure you want to set up uh, really for keeping a collector sea urchin is really a uh, more open kind of reef. Uh, you want to avoid very densely packed reefs or compacted reefs. It makes it harder for them to move about. And uh, having a little bit of open area in the front, obviously, and channels going through your reef, that's a better type of structure for urchins to be able to maneuver themselves around. Uh, you want to avoid, of course, keeping uh, the collector urchin with any predatory species of fish, large predators, uh, trigger fish, of course, that's a no-no. They're known to eat urchins. Um, and, of course, the stocking rate when it comes to uh, keeping urchins. Uh, one per 40 to 50 gallons is pretty much uh, a safe ratio. Uh, they're very adept at eating coralline algae and getting rid of any algae in your tank very quickly. They're a great part of any cleanup crew when it comes to reef keeping. So you got to bear in mind that they're going to run out of food at one point and uh, you're going to have to supplement their diet. You know, too, many, too high a stocking rate is going to put really feeding pressure on them and they're not going to be as well nourished. Now, when it comes to water quality or water conditions for keeping a collector urchin, you know, pristine water quality is very important, just as it would be when you're keeping a reef aquarium. It's always key. So a good functioning protein skimmer, a good water changing regimen is important. Uh, as far as the actual uh, values or basic values for keeping them, a, spe a specific gravity of 1.021 to 1.025, a pH range of about 8.1 to 8.4 and a temperature range of about 74 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 to 27 degrees Celsius. Now when it comes to feeding your collector urchin, uh, as we mentioned uh, initially, uh, they're constantly roaming and grazing on algae throughout your aquarium. So you got to bear that in mind when you're stocking them. As we mentioned before, one per 40 to 50 gallons, U.S. gallons is really 
you know, the most you should go to provide them with proper nourishment. At one point, they're going to look, they're going to run out of a lot of algae films and so forth to feed upon. Uh, they're also very adept at stripping coralline algae out of your aquarium, which means in relation to feeding that you should be paying attention to carbon at hardness. Make sure you maintain a very good level of carbon at hardness to stimulate the growth of coralline algae because these guys are going to be eating it. Now, when you run out of algaes and you want to supplement their diet, a good idea is uh, to include some sheets of dried nori seaweed that can be clipped to the uh, side of the aquarium at night, preferably is probably a better time to offer them uh, a sheet of uh, nori seaweed. In summary, the collector urchin is a really interesting little invertebrate to add to your reef aquarium. It forms an important part of a reef cleanup crew uh, it's very attractively colored and it provides a really different life form moving about your tank, which adds to the interest level. We definitely include one in any, any reef that we can, that we set up for sure. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Look forward to doing the next one till the next time.